Alright, so here we are in Adobe After Effects CS5. Uh, now, if you're unfamiliar with this program, it's essentially Photoshop uh, with a timeline. So we can go ahead and import our footage um, into our project panel right here. And we can layer our footage here and we can view our footage here. And here are our effects. So I don't want, I don't, I don't want this to be a, an After Effects course, but I just want to show you the basics. So um, we're going to go ahead and want to import all those uh, images that we rendered out. So there's a few ways to do this. You can go to File and then import file. Um, you can just double click in here or and I, I think that's the, those are the only two ways. So I'm going to go ahead and import and go to file. And here are all our test renders that we created. Um, we've got our beauty field. So we're going to go ahead and just select all of these and hit open. Now right now we're only working with stills but After Effects does uh, support sequences. So if we rendered out all of our uh, if we rendered out an, an animation uh, it would it would go ahead and pull in all those sequences together as one movie file so that's a pretty nice feature so we're gonna go ahead and create a new composition so there's a few ways to do this you can go to composition new composition you can click this new composition button here or you can select a piece of footage and go ahead and either drag it onto here or into the composition panel so I'm gonna go ahead and just drag it in here and what that does is creates a new composition uh, to the exact size that we need it uh, according to this piece of footage so it even names the composition uh, according to that path. So I, dr I drug the beauty pass uh, to a new composition and it created a composition called beauty pass. So I can go ahead and rename this and I'll just call this full comp or something like that, anything you want. So now we can go ahead and start to layer in some different things. So we can go ahead and start from the top. So we already have our beauty pass layered in. Um, but remember that this already has all of our lights uh, information. So we're going to want to adjust that as well. So let's go ahead and move into our our next one, the fill layer. So let's go ahead and drop that layer right above this. And you can see that now we've got our fill um, on top. But this isn't what we want. We want to combine them or add them. So if we go into our blending mode, if you press F4, it'll change it. So if you don't see it, press F4 and you can see our blending modes. Select that and we'll go ahead and go to add. Now you can see that um, it's passing through all the black information and we're just getting our color and value information so if I were to select this layer and press uh, the letter T for transparency it'll bring up the opacity uh, slider so we can go ahead and slide that and you can see um, how quickly we can adjust um, this light um, so you can see that it's much quicker than doing this in a 3D application so let's go ahead and move down let's go to our key light layer and we'll go ahead and put that on top and we'll go ahead and put in add as well so now you're going to see that everything's getting really blown out and that's because we're adding these layers to an already um, lit layer. So let's go ahead and turn that all the way down to zero. So now you can see if I adjust this opacity we've got control over that key light as well. And let's go ahead and we'll skip this and we'll go to our rim layer. So we'll add the rim layer and hit add. You can see how that works. So it's got that nice line. I'm going to hit add and now we've got control over that rim light. So you can see how we can adjust that. So let's say um, we're in production and we want to adjust the lighting. If we were to render out this way, we wouldn't have to go back into 3D. We can just kind of bring that down and adjust this. We can even adjust the colors to each light as well. So let's go ahead and do our specular. So let's go ahead and add that spec light in there and we'll hit add. And now we have full control over that. So we don't have to worry about for every shot adjusting the specular le levels we can do it in post and we've got a lot of control so that might be a little too much we can put it down to right there uh, next we'll go ahead and work with our reflection pass so let's go ahead and put that on top and now we can go ahead and add that as well so if we add that now you can if I turn that off and on we can see well actually I'm gonna have to turn off what, what I should have done was render out each layer uh, just as the diffuse with no reflection because as you can see uh, each one of these produces their own reflection so I could have I could have rendered out each layer with a render pass with a, with no reflections but let's say I wanted to add more reflections I can go ahead and do that right here and I have control over just that reflection so this is how After Effects works it works uh, with layers whereas um, the other node based compositing works uh, kind of differently and I'm going to touch upon that with Fusion in the next video 
but I want to go ahead and show you how we can get a little bit more control. So if we go into our effects, we can actually change uh, some of the colors so and some of the values and we can color correct. So if I wanted to overall change the color and the values, um, we're going to need to create, instead of adding the effect to each layer, we can create a new adjustment layer. So what this adjustment layer does is uh, you can assign effects to this layer and it'll affect all of the layers below it. So let's say I want to color correct this image. We'll go ahead and just label this color correct or color correction. And if I want to put a levels on it, I like to use the levels effector. So we'll go ahead and select levels and drag that right on top of this layer. So now we've got we've got our level sliders here and we can adjust the image um, how we want. So if we want more Actually, I'll use the curves. I like the curves too. So we use the curves. I'm a curves kind of guy. We'll put that right here. So this, uh, if you're unfamiliar with the curves, it's basically here's your um, your blacks and here's your whites. And we don't want to adjust, or you can you can adjust the white level. So we can anything that's pure white will kind of go gray. But we don't want we want to keep the whites white and the blacks black. But we can adjust everything in between. So if we think that our image is too dark, we can go ahead and increase that and bring that up. But you can also um, make your darks darker and your lights lighter, so we can add two points like that, and that'll give you some nice um, contrast. But I don't, I don't like to go too heavy with that, so I like to just keep it real subtle. And you can turn this off and see the difference. Mm -hmm. We can also add different kinds of uh, color corrections, like the color balance. Now, the built-in one within After Effects is pretty crappy. I mean, uh, it's just you've got all these sliders that adjust. So you've got, you've got three um, three main things. We've got the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. And for each one, we've got red, green, and blue. So if we want to adjust the darks and we kind of want to give a little bit of blue in those shadows, we'll increase the shadow blue balance. So we can kind of make it a little bit darker. Now there's a free plugin called Colorista, and it's uh, from Magic Bullet. And I prefer this one a little bit better just because it's a little bit um, visually uh, easier. So if I go ahead and I go ahead and just actually delete that, and we can adjust these. So now you can see how we've got our three things: our shadows, midtones, and highlights. But we can kind of adjust them um, a little bit better, and we've got a little bit more control over each one. So this is a free plugin, and um, if you want to do a little bit of color correcting, this is a nice one to use. So you can see how how quickly we can change the look of our image. We can give it a bit more blue. Or maybe we want more of a red, uh, red or orange tone. We can adjust that. And maybe I think that this key light is, uh, maybe, I, maybe I think it's not bright enough. I can actually duplicate this key light, pressing Control D. And now we've got two key lights um, adding together. So you can see now, um, this light is twice as bright, so I can adjust that. Maybe I don't want that much light. I can add just a little bit more light. And now you can see how we can quickly adjust our image, and we've got a lot of control. We can even adjust um, each individual layer. So let's say I want my rim light to have a different color. I can go ahead and go to Hue and Saturation and assign that rim layer, or not the rim, I'm going to take that out, uh, into our fill. So let's go ahead and add that to our fill layer. And now you can see how we can adjust the color of, the, of that fill light. So we can kind of adjust the color and make it, or this is our saturation. Let's change our value, our hue. So now you can see how, and you're going to want to do this very subtly, but you can see how we can do a little bit of changes to the color. So next we're going to go ahead and move into Fusion and I'm going to show you how a node-based compositor works and it's important to know because a lot of the big studios use node-based compositing over this but I, I think it's pretty easy and I don't go too in-depth with how many layers and nodes I use but alright so next we're going to move into Fusion.